Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member uh, T. Berry, uh, the members of the subcommittee, uh, a number of whom, including Mr. Blumenauer, who have uh, been uh, strong proponents of infrastructure over the years. Uh, this is a timely hearing, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to testify about my proposal. It's a proposal along with Representatives uh, Keith Ellison, uh, Steve Israel, and Anthony Weiner. And yes, it is about to create a national infrastructure bank. Uh, and I will also say I'm honored to be on this panel with people who are uh, such strong and esteemed proponents of smart infrastructure investment with uh, Peter DeFazio and Dan Lipinski, Mayor Rendell, and we've shared a, uh, a podium and a stage uh, uh, oftentimes, and, and Mayor Villaraigosa. Um, the signs of our infrastructure crisis are all around. In 2003, the Northeast experienced a major and widespread blackout. We will never forget the broken levees uh, after Hurricane uh, Katrina or the major I-35 bridge collapse in Minneapolis. Just this month, Boston endured a catastrophic pipe break that shut off water for two million people. With these human costs, there are heavy economic costs. Lost opportunities for job creation and economic growth, we need to remain competitive in the 21st century. China puts 9 percent of its GDP into infrastructure, India 5 percent, and rising. Here we spend less than 2 percent of GDP, down from a time when we spent 8 percent. These, these other nations are investing in 21st century infrastructure, while we too often are shoring up old legacy systems. We all know that we need to invest in our infrastructure in order to move from recovery to long-term economic growth. Yet, the $2.2 trillion question is how to pay for it. That is how much the American Society of Civil Engineers estimates that we need to spend over the next five years just to bring our infrastructure up to an adequate condition. Representatives Ellison, Israel, Weiner, and I introduced the National Infrastructure Development Bank as an important way to supplement other federal programs such as the Surface Transportation Reauthorization, which cannot make up for this investment deficit alone. An infrastructure bank will be able to leverage private dollars toward merit-based projects across the country. The bank would be an independent government-owned corporation modeled after the European Investment Bank, which has been successfully investing in European transportation, energy, and telecommunications projects for over 50 years. In 2008, the uh, in, uh, European Investment Bank lent $81 billion to finance projects and had a target of $112 billion last year. Our proposed bank would be managed by a five-member board of directors with public and private sector experience appointed to a six-year term by the President with the advice and consent of the Senate. The board's essential function would be to issue 30-plus-year federal bonds and use proceeds from their issuance to offer loans and loan guarantees to transportation, environmental, energy, and telecommunications broadband projects. The board, under the direction of the Treasury Secretary, could also buy and sell infrastructure-related loans and securities, creating a secondary market for U.S. infrastructure development and increasing investments in these sectors. Under the board would be a nine-member executive committee headed by an executive director, including a chief compliance officer, chief financial officer, chief asset and liability management officer, chief loan origination officer, chief operations officer, chief risk officer, chief treasury officer, and general counsel. The executive committee would handle day-to-day -day operations and have finance and infrastructure experts that would recommend projects to the board. Uh, I'm much aware of the concern about past experience of uh, with, uh, with, uh, with other entities. The bank would also have a five-member risk management committee headed by a chief risk officer to create financial credit and operational risk management guidelines and ensure diversification of lending activities by both region and infrastructure project type. Finally, the bank would have a five-member audit committee headed by the chief compliance officer, which would work with outside auditors in providing auditing activities for the bank. As a whole, the bank would objectively review projects provide financing for those with clear economic, environmental, and social benefits. Criteria for this merit-based project selection process might include a transportation project's ability to reduce surface or air traffic congestion, a water project's public health benefits, an energy product's ability to reduce carbon emissions, or a telecommunications project's emphasis on deploying broadband to rural 
and disadvantaged communities. The bank, as we propose it, is capitalized like other development banks that the United States has uh, helped fund, such as the World Bank. It would include $25 billion in paid-in capital through five, five billion annual appropriations. Uh, an additional $225 billion would be available at the call of the Treasury Secretary to meet bank obligations, if necessary, with a conservative leverage ratio of two and a half to one. This is what the European Investment Bank does. The bank could potentially issue up to $625 billion in bonds. I emphasize that the bank that we are proposing would need to be self-sustaining, meaning loans would need to be repaid, including through, yes, user fees or other mechanisms. And a good example of a strong candidate project, as Mayor Villaragosa will tell you, is the Los Angeles plan to expand the L.A. rail system using revenues from a half-cent sales tax increase approved by the voters. As the mayor has said here before, a government loan would enable completion of the project in 10 years instead of 30, perhaps even at a lower cost. Again, your subcommittee faces many challenges identifying revenue streams to make badly needed investments in infrastructure projects across the country. I believe that a national infrastructure bank has the potential to channel private dollars from pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, insurance companies, and the like, to create a U.S. infrastructure development market that can help to meet that need. CalPERS, the nation's largest public pension fund, has already made $700 million in infrastructure commitments, is looking to make more. In so doing, it is following the path of pension funds in Australia, Canada, and Europe. So the money is out there. Even despite the downturn, we need to make sure that it gets put to work for America. Our proposal has been endorsed by Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, the concept of the proposal has been endorsed by the Mayor's Bloomberg, Governor's Rendell, and uh, uh, Schwarzenegger's Build America's Future, uh, as well as the National Gover Governors Association, uh, by the civil engineers, by the U.S. Chamber, uh, by uh, uh, labor organizations that has support from across a spectrum of business and labor. It has been co-sponsored by about 56 of our colleagues, including members of this panel. By supplementing our existing federal programs, this bank could provide crucial revenue to the infrastructure projects that will improve our lives, lead to job creation, and long-term economic growth. It's the kind of growth that America needs to remain competitive in the future. Final comment. This nation was built on bricks, mortar, and fiber optics with a vision, even in difficult economic times, that public investment in these kinds of efforts, the transcontinental railroad, our road system, are all built with public investment, which has created enormous economic growth in this nation. We need to do it again. I thank this committee very much for asking me to be here. Thank you. Thank you.